So I'm gonna pretend I did not see the corn on the ground. Okay, we'll see if this works. I hear someone or something. How? Hello. Bye. Top of the morning. Good morning, you guys. I'm gonna pretend I did not see the corn on the ground. Mark had a truck he had to load this morning, plus he's filling the overhead bin, which is right there. And uh, I think he said the leg plugged on him. Uh, I kind of accidentally asked him for some corn. I, I'm out of corn across the road too. Today's just kind of a chaotic day uh, because we want to get at hay this afternoon. Ethan is gonna be harvesting our hay today, but we also borrow his merger and I messaged him last yesterday and said, uh, I'll come in the morning, grab that merger, and he's like, actually, merger has a flat tire. So I think we have a tire we're gonna take to him uh, just to limp through today. So I'm hoping all this just falls nicely into place, but seeing that first thing is <laughs> hopefully not a sign of things to come. I'm across the road. We are gonna fill up our corn bin. And uh, when I got over here, there was like four baby foxes. So they've built a den. I just thought I was being quiet. I wanted them to come back out again. But I'll show you their den. So there's a hole here. And then there's tracks. There's holes here. And poop and it's just all tracks everywhere there's another hole I'll try and get out here every morning and see if I can see if I can be really quiet so I can catch them they're about the size of Lucy but skinny because Lucy's a bit girthy and they and one actually barked at me which I didn't know foxes barked but I think I startled them you were so cute anyway I'll keep you posted Timed? Like, do you have that timed in there? Yeah. Is that okay? Just a little bit left on the yeah, right? Yeah, I can dump it in this one. Cool. Wait.
merging is done, it took us, we didn't get started till till noon or so. It, the merger had a flat tire. We took a tire and it didn't fit. So Ethan had to run to town, get a new tire. Anyways, uh, everything's merged. I love that tractor. It was so nice to run. Mark actually programmed it. So uh, there's like a, there's a, I think it's a start and a go and an end. And he had it programmed that it all lift at the right time and shut the conveyor off on the merger. And then when you go back in and press go, it drops and goes and starts up on all on its own and goes the right speed. So it's got cruise control. It's like, it's just, it was a joy to drive. You didn't have to think, which is really quite nice. However, hay is not going to go today. It was uh, a bit wetter than we thought it would maybe be, and we just have not had breeze today. There was a little bit this afternoon, but we've lost it. So, and it's been cloudy. So we've got everybody lined up. I've got Monty coming in the morning. He's actually bringing me coffee, which is beautiful. Ethan's coming and Bob is coming. Uh, he actually dropped the bagger off today. So the bagger's ready to go. Everything is ready to go, which is nice. Uh, the hitches are here, the wagons are here and serviced. And yeah, we just need Ethan with the harvester and we're, I think, gonna start at 10 in the morning. Good morning, it's sunny. There's no wind, which kind of sucks. We were hoping for some wind and some sun, but hey, we have sun and that's better than yesterday. It is the beginning of what is going to be one real long day of hay. I was really hoping we get started yesterday and do one bag yesterday, one bag today, just because of all the people that have to do hay, I'm the one that has to stand by the bagger on asphalt for hours on end in the, uh, in the heat, which I'm okay with the heat, but my legs and my back get quite sore. So um, the boys are like, oh, we could do it all in one day, but they're all in air conditioned tractors. It is what it is. The hay just was not quite ready yesterday. It was a bit wet. So we did get it all merged. I'm actually just driving to another farm. Mark had to drop off the fertilizer tender. Uh, he has been side dressing corn already. Just uh, one of two uh, applications. Uh, and he's using his uh, his dry fertilizer spreader and he just loves it. But uh, I've got Jess lined up, Monty lined up, Ethan's coming and Bob's coming for 10 a.m. So I got to get chores done before then. Okay, I thought I would climb this bin. <laughs> I'm out of breath. Uh, okay, so here's a really good view of what we've done. We basically yesterday merged two rows into one and that keeps the harvester keeps the harvester filled a lot better and it just gets stuff done a bit quicker so we will start the bag here and then do a second one and he brought the wagons yesterday and the bag is ready to go so we've got a 300 foot bag tube of plastic we'll probably cut it off at about 130 feet we'll have a little bit of an end to get it sealed sorry this way and then we'll do the same going this way and we should have enough plastic. Oh, I'm out of breath. What a view though, eh? I hear someone or something down at the end of the barn here making an awful noise. Do you hear that? It's more like a I'm in trouble noise. Oh yes, this qualifies. What are you doing? What seems to be the problem here? How? Why? Why? <coughs> You're in the one pen that I <coughs> not get this open probably. Ugh. <coughs> oh, I think these are all pen. <coughs> Alright, let's see if I can get you. Try that. Try that. Was that you with your head caught? I don't think so. I think she's down there. This is cinnamon. Cinnamon and Bella's. If you can see the little black one, she's down there. Hi, baby. You used to be much friendlier when you weren't a teenager.
morning. We did finish. It was an 11 hour day, but it went ridiculously smooth. I didn't stop at the bagger until uh, we had the bag switch. So we got two full bags. Hello. Hi. Morning. Top of the morning. Top of the morning. Yeah. The bags look straight from this side. <laughs> well, it doesn't look too bad from here, I guess. These are probably about 130 feet long, 10 feet diameter. Uh, it's pretty well packed in there. Really grassy hay, so I think it just, um, we had a lot of volume. So really happy to have this much just ready to go and out of the way for the season. We'll probably bail second cut and then third cut. We've got room here to put a bag. And then we'll just judge uh, based on inventories at the end of the year if we need to do a fourth cut or not. And depending on rain, because this summer is turning, turning into a dry one. Okay, uh, my sheep are getting mad at me. I had to feed them early yesterday and now I'm back on schedule, so they're not happy. Uh, whenever we do hay, so I took a wee little handful from every load yesterday of the hay. It smells really good. It actually is already starting to kind of warm up, especially at near the bottom. Uh, my guess is this hay, the thing with chopped hay, we take it when it's actually still pretty wet. So it's about six, I think the goal is usually around 68% moisture. So there's quite a bit of water in this feed and that's what helps it all kind of ferment in those bags. So uh, it's a little, it's a lot different than dry hay and the rations will, uh, the rations will reflect that because there's water in it, obviously. So what I do, as you guys very well know, is I take a sample all the time of all my feed um, and I do one at harvest. So I have this hay here. I'm just, so what I do is, I don't know if you can see that. Shepherd Creek First Cut, cut Hay 2021. And I uh, give this to Jamie. So what I'll do is I'll just get a little sample here. I'm gonna throw it in the freezer until he's around and it'll stay fine. There's no rush because we're not feeding this anytime soon. And just like that bag I just opened, it's just for a guide that first few days when I'm switching bags over until they, get, they can get in and get a real fresh uh, fermented sample. So this is kind of just what we do. Well, there we go. So I get, I just get a pail and I stir it all together and then hopefully that's a good enough sample. Try to get the air out of it as I can. And I will throw that in the freezer. All right, I'm gonna do chores and I'll catch up with you guys after chores. It's Jess. We are finally doing some weaning weights. These are long overdue. I weaned these guys a week ago today. Um, there's quite a few and Miles and his group are in this pen uh, and they're quite a bit older. So their weights are gonna distort the average weaning weight, but uh, we'll see how they, they do. I can't even remember how many lambs I have. So we'll know how many lambs I have and what the average weight's gonna be here. And then in a few weeks, what I'm going to do is actually sort the females and males because there's quite a few in here that I want to take replacements from. Exciting. Yeah. Number one. Thank you, Art. You in there. Oh boy. One more step. Oh, Miles. <laughs> Miles, you're like full grown. It's a big boy. Just hold that pose. I gotta send this to Belinda. Come on, Pearly. Oh, girl. Oh, she did good. Did you get one of those ones? There you go. Good girl. Not bad. 
probably should have done better. <laughs> well, that's just finished 184 lammies. They're already laying down. Pretty stress free. More stressful on us, I think, than the lambs. However, let's go over the data. So 184 lambs, minimum weight was that little lamb, the one of two twins that were born April 15th, that like oopsie, the ewe lamb that lambed, that uh, I had to keep separate for quite a while. The little baby twin never did make it. It, it uh, I think it lived for hmm, four days, five days. And uh, the older one did live, so it was 28 pounds. So that was the minimum one. The biggest one was not Miles, he got beat by a ram lamb, that single that was born in the same week as him, and it was 122 pounds. So that was crazy. Um, average weaning weight for this group was 59 pounds, which is crazy, 59 and a half. Um, but again, about how many, do you know how many were in Miles' group? Six. Was there six lambs? There were six mums. I can't remember how many in that group. So they would have kind of tipped the scales a little bit, but for the most part, even the ones that were born that first, in that first week of the actual group did really, really well. For gender, looks like 46% rams and 54% ewes. So more ewes than rams. Uh, for sires, this is kind of what I need to know. 48% of the group were Ritos, which is really nice because the Rito sires, the Rito sire and lambs are the ones I want to keep, or are the ones I really want to go through and keep a lot of those females for replacements. Uh, so that is really good. 87 of the 183 were Rito sired. Everything looks pretty good. It was better than I maybe thought with this group. All right, we're gonna we're gonna clean up and get out of here. Guess what? We did all that in three minutes and 17 seconds. Oh, so that bad. All right, we take these back? Yeah. Call her a day? Yeah. What do you think of hay this year? Actually, it was pretty good this year. I agree. It's just hay. It's just <laughs> hay. It's itchy. We don't go into it with the best attitude, so. True. We don't usually enjoy it that much. All right, let's go.